Let p, q, r, and s be the points on the plane with position vectors negative 2i minus j, 4i, 3i plus 3j, and negative 3i plus 2j, respectively. The quadrilateral p, q, r, s must be a. Uh, so let's just, let's just graph each of these position vectors, or graph the points that they're specifying. So let me draw my coordinate axes right over here. So that would be this is my vertical. Let me draw I could draw a straighter line than that. Uh, there you go. That's about as good as I can do. Let me draw the horizontal. That's a better job, I think. And then let me mark it off. Let's see, we go as high as four. We go up to four i. So one, two, three, four. We go as low as negative two i, so one, two. Just making sure let me make it a little bit even, because we're gonna have to figure out the shape of whatever we draw. Then we're gonna go up three, and we're gonna go up three. One, two, three. And I think that and we actually go down one as well. So I think that'll give us and we could keep marking them off if we wanted to, but we don't need to based on the positions that have been specified. So let's draw these vectors. So let's draw vector p first. Negative two i minus j. So negative 2i, i is along the horizontal, or you can imagine as the x-coordinate. So negative 2i minus j. So it is this position vector right over here. If we put it in standard form, starting with its base at the origin, it's that position vector. But it's specifying that point over there, which is the coordinate negative 2, negative 1. So that's we could, let me just write it down, negative 2, negative 1. Now let's do. 4i. So 4i is literally, we just go, that's just 4 in the x direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's no y component, or there's no j component, no vertical component. So it specifies, it specifies that position right over there. Or it specifies the point 4, comma 0. Then we have 3i plus 3j. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That is that point right there. The position vector specifies that point, or the specifies the point three comma three. And then finally, we have negative three i. Let me do this in another color. Negative three i. So one two three plus two j. One two. So right, right over there. So that is that last position vector, and specifying the point negative three comma two. And they want to know what's the quadrilateral made by these four positions. So let's draw it. Let's connect the dots. So this is P. Go to Q. It gets us that line right over there. Then from Q to R, we're going to go like that. We're going to go like that. And then from R to S, we're going to go like we're going to go like that. And then, and then actually, it's going to go a little bit more. It's going to go like that. And then from S, oh, sorry, that's from S to R, and then R to, and and then and that's from sorry, that's from R to S, and then S to P is going to be like that. So just eyeballing it, it's clearly not a square. It's clearly not a square. It's clearly not a rectangle. It's coming off at different angles. It's clearly not. It's clearly not a rhombus. A rhombus would have all of the same sides. So a square would be all 90 degrees would be all the same sides and all the angles are 90 degrees. That would be a square. It's clearly not a square. A rectangle would be all the angles are 90 degrees, but the sides, two sides are going to be the same and the other two sides are going to be the same. This is not, these do not look like 90 degree angles. Now, the last one, and you could you could try if you want. I mean, just eyeballing it, it's pretty clear these aren't 90 degree angles. But if you wanted to, you could see find the slope of this and find the slope of that line. And if they're not the negative inverse of each other, then they're not perpendicular and they're not coming at 90 degree angles. And so the last one is, are they a rhombus? A rhombus is a parallelogram while the sides are the same. So a rhombus would look like, a rhombus would look like that. Clearly not a rhombus. That these sides are clearly much longer than those sides over there. Now, just from deductive reasoning, it looks like the answer is A. It's a parallelogram. But we can verify it. We can make sure we can make sure that in order for this to be a parallelogram, these two sides have to be parallel, and these two sides, and these two sides have to be parallel. Or another way to think of it, they would have to have the same slope. So we could verify it. If we were taking this on an exam under time pressure, we would just cross these out and it looks pretty good. We would just go with A. But let's just verify it. 
So what's the slope? What's the slope down here? What's the slope down here? So it's change in y over change in x. So 0 minus negative 1, 0 minus negative 1 over 4 minus negative 2. Or this is equal to 1 over 4 minus negative 2 is positive 6. This is 1, 6. Or another way to think about it, we ran 6 and we only rised 1. This is 1, 6. Now what happens over here? Well, it's the same thing. We're going from negative 3 to 3. So we're running 6. So we say 3 minus negative 3 is equal to 6. And how much did we rise? We have 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. So this is also a slope of 1 6. So these two lines are clearly parallel. And now let's do it for these other two. What's the slope over here? What's the slope over here? And actually, you could just do rise over run. Rise over run. So this is, and that's exactly what we were doing before, but just to give you the taste for everything. So we ran. To go from here to here, we have to move to the right one. So we run 1. And how much do we rise? Well, we had to go down 3. We have to go down 3, so it's negative 3. So the slope here is negative 3. And what about here? To go from this point to this point, we went to the right, 1. So we ran 1, and we had to go down. We started at 2, we ended up at negative 1. We had to go down 3. So the slope here is also negative 3. So these lines are also parallel. So we're definitely dealing with a parallelogram, which is neither a rhombus nor a rectangle.